Hello and welcome everyone. Today in the lab, I'm going to be giving you a brief web page test tutorial and along the way, point out why I think PageSpeed Insights users should be using webpagetest.org instead of Google's PageSpeed Insights in most cases. If you somehow found this video and you don't know what Google PageSpeed Insights is or how it works, I strongly recommend you watch my PageSpeed Insights tutorial. I'll link here and then come back to this video. Okay, let's get right into it. All the web page test key features are laid out right here on the home page under the simple configuration tab. It can test your site and measure Core Web Vitals on multiple browsers from many locations all over the world. PageSpeed Insights can't do that. And there are many more browser and location options under the advanced configuration tab, which I'll cover in a moment. Now look here and you will see that by checking this box, you can run the Lighthouse audit and even pull PageSpeed Insights info like Chrome user experience data when you run the test as I will show you later. Another key feature of web page test is the ability to measure the repeat view, which as it says here, closes the browser and then opens the browser and loads the page again to test caching policies. This can be very handy to measure because it gives you some idea how fast the same page or similar pages that use mostly the same cached assets perform after the first load of a page. But the Lighthouse audit in PageSpeed Insights doesn't measure that. Web page test does measure that to some degree. But don't run this test using the simple configuration though. I'll explain why in a moment as I show you how I use the advanced configuration for all of my tests. So I'm not going to run the test using the simple configuration because it automatically performs three test runs. And if you check the repeat view box, that actually counts as six runs. And there are also some other things I want to customize in the test anyway. Web page test is free up to 300 runs if you sign up for an account, but it will let you run a few tests without forcing you to sign up if you just want to try it out, unlike some other tools out there. Looking at you, GT metrics. Plus, when you do sign up for an account, web page test stores your tests in this test history tab as an added benefit, which I find helpful. So I'm going to switch to the advanced tab now, and you will see the number of options in terms of locations, browsers and devices and all of these configuration tabs can be a little overwhelming at first. Where should we even start? Here's my approach. I run most of my tests the same way except for changing the location and occasionally one other thing. Here's why. Web page test runs Lighthouse, but it also has its own tests it runs including its own way of measuring core web vitals with many different web browsers including Safari, mobile devices in locations as we have seen. But I am mainly interested in filling in the feature gaps where PageSpeed Insights falls short so I can increase my test coverage. So I just want to configure web page test to measure things the same way as Google when it runs the Lighthouse audit so I have as close to an apples to apples comparison between the two as possible. Here's how I do that. In this first dropdown, always just leave site performance selected. If you do that, then you can configure the rest of this test down here to also provide web vitals in the Lighthouse audit in a single report. And I'll show you how I do that in just a second here. Paste a URL to test if you want to just test one URL, but there is also a way to test multiple pages in bulk I will show you in just a moment. Next, if you click this button here, it will show you a map of all the locations you can test from or that same info in a list format right here under the dropdown. Scroll to the bottom of this list and you will see you can even test on a physical M1 Mac Mini which lets you test desktop versions of Safari, Firefox, and Chrome on a Mac as well as an emulated Chrome for iOS devices. To be clear, you have to select one of these M1 Mac locations if you want Safari to appear as a browser option in here. But for now, I will just use London as a location and a Motorola G Power as the browser device. And if you look in the Chromium tab, you will see that you can also check a box here to perform a Lighthouse audit with the selected device and location in addition to its own tests, except notice here it says it uses a 3G fast connection for mobile and 4G for desktop independent of test settings. The reason web page test does this is because it's their equivalent to the throttled connection speeds that Google simulates on PageSpeed Insights. I even saw mention of this in Google's Lighthouse documentation somewhere. Yes, that's right. Google actually mentions webpagetest.org in their Lighthouse documentation. Now, because of that, and since I'm looking to achieve performance levels that will please the Google gods in the most challenging conditions, back in the test settings tab, I almost always select 3G fast for the connection and Moto G power for the device because 
That's what Google uses in its Lighthouse audit. Let's also just select one test run here and make sure that first view and repeat view is selected. Then I mostly only vary the location from test to test, so I'm getting more of an apples to apples comparison between the Lighthouse audit and webpagetest.org results between locations. This makes the number of testing options here a little less overwhelming, and occasionally I will run some additional tests with the other most used browser, which is Safari. According to this data, Chrome and Safari account for about 80 to 85% of the browser use on the net, so I focus on just those two in a handful of locations around the world. Now, if you have a lot of pages to test, it could get quite tedious to configure the test like this for every single URL you want to test. Fortunately, webpagetest.org also provides a way to test multiple URLs in bulk. To run this test on multiple pages as we have it configured here, you just click on this tab that says bulk testing and paste a list of URLs here. Now you will need a pro account to use this option, which I do have, but it's not that expensive. The cheapest option gets you 1,000 test runs for about $19, which works out to about two cents for a run. But you can also just sign up for a free account, which will get you 300 runs per month and the added feature of a test history going back up to one year, so you can easily review results from previous tests while logged into your account. But you will not be able to use that bulk testing feature with a free account. Let's click Start Test and check out the results. After you click Start on a bulk test, you will get a status page like this, which actually needs to be refreshed to check status and does not update automatically. I've clicked Refresh here a couple of times while pausing the video, and you can see one test has finished, but rather than wait for this to finish, I'm going to check out a test I ran previously in the interest of time. Once all the tests are finished, on this page, you can click the results here. But before I do that, I want to mention that you may want to copy paste this link somewhere if you want to return to this page again like I just did for this video. Because your test history just lists all the tests in one big list and doesn't group a bulk test together like this or give you a way to come back to this page later. Looking at the results for Moz, I really like how they explain what each test metric means right here so you don't have to guess or reference external documentation. And they show you all those metrics for both the first load and the repeat load so you can see the results side by side. Core Web Vitals for first view and repeat view are here. And to get access to the Lighthouse report, you scroll up and click on this drop down and select it down here. And I'll point out now, like I said earlier, as long as you select site performance and check the Lighthouse audit box, you can now access that and Core Web Vitals right here in a single report without having to run multiple reports. So I'll click on the Lighthouse report and show you all the results here look very similar to the Lighthouse section of a PageSpeed Insights report with Core Web Vitals, all the audit scores, and all the same audits right in one report. Notice the Lighthouse and web page test results for Core Web Vitals are also similar. But where is the user experience data we are used to getting with PageSpeed Insights? It's back in the performance summary if you scroll down and look right here. And if the page you analyze doesn't have enough traffic to generate Google user experience data, you won't see anything here. By the way, if your user experience in watching this video has been good so far and you think the info provided here is going to save you time testing your site, could you please do me a favor and click on the like button to help support the channel? I spend a lot of time and effort on these videos to make them the best I can, so it would really mean a lot to me. Thanks. Now back to the web page test tutorial. There is a ton more information than what Lighthouse provides that can be used to debug issues impacting Core Web Vitals, like the waterfall view you can get to by clicking here on the image of the waterfall. But once the waterfall loads, you'll notice this is very interactive, where you can hover over things and click on things and get a ton more information. Your legend for what all this means is right here. Scroll down a little more and you can see that there is device resource utilization here and scroll down a little bit more and there's just a connection view here. But even better than that, if we go back one page, there's this video column where there are some film strips that are supercharged compared to what you might find with other web performance tools out there. In this film strip view, for instance, when you scroll down and drag this scroll bar, you can see how everything here affects visual progress where this red line down here corresponds to this red line here. And as I scroll back and forth, this red line moves to show you how things progress along the timeline in terms of resources loading 
and the actual visual progress here. And the film strip key shows you when events related to Core Web Vitals take place, like Largest Contentful Paint, and whether a layout shift also occurred at the same time, as well as when a bunch of other layout shifts are occurring. At the bottom of that waterfall, there is this graph of visual progress I find useful sometimes. And let's go back again so I can show you how you can click here to watch a video of the page loading. There are just so many things, too much to talk about in this video. So after this video, I encourage you to explore yourself. But first, there's one really cool feature I wanna show you, and that's what Web Page Test calls no-code experiments. This is a pro feature, but sometimes they will let you run an experiment or two on the free plan to see how powerful it can be. To try an experiment, go back to the performance summary and up near the top, you can click on pro experiments here, scroll down and check a box next to one or more of the suggestions to improve performance. When you do that, this box pops up here that says rerun test with experiments. Web page test will then give you a side-by-side -side comparison with and without optimization. I tried this out on a prototype of the new Meteoric Money Labs website and ran the suggested experiment for inlining external CSS. That worked okay, and I noticed a very slight improvement with no adverse effects. Then I ran another suggested experiment of loading CSS asynchronously, which was disastrous for Core Web Vitals. Sure, it did deliver a 0.5 second reduction in LCP, but it caused a layout shift so bad it would have failed Core Web Vitals assessment. And the page load was also quite ugly, showing an unstyled content while the page was loading as well. So this no-code feature really saved me a lot of time. Despite all these great features, webpagetest.org isn't perfect. To summarize, here are the web page test pros and cons I can see. First, the web page test pros. It's a one-stop shop. It can simultaneously run Google Lighthouse Audit and measure Core Web Vitals on multiple browsers from many locations all over the world. It provides much more data to help troubleshoot issues with the site, and it has pro features I want to list here too, like the ability to test multiple URLs in bulk and unlimited no-code experiments like I just talked about. By the way, this is not a sponsored video, but I also want to point out that a pro plan gets you some other nice features like more test locations, priority in the test queues over free users, and access to their API you can use to build your own apps running on their global infrastructure. Now the web page test cons. Free use is limited to 300 runs per month, and you have to sign up for an account to get that. It is a little slow sometimes, taking one to two minutes at times just to test a single URL, and sometimes even longer because occasionally you will have to wait in a queue behind others to test in certain locations. But if you really want to minimize your time spent using web page test, then you'll want to know the method I figured out to optimize any site in just two steps to achieve perfect PageSpeed Insight scores and crush Core Web Vitals by watching this next video here. And if you aren't seeing that video here yet, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you will get notified when that comes out. Or if you don't want to rely on the algorithm, head over to the new Meteoric Money Labs website and subscribe to the email list for regular content updates. I'll put a link in the description for that. Thanks for watching my web page test tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one.